when you work with Disney, say on Winnie the Pooh, or other, say, such as Winnie the Pooh on the film side, how does the process work? Do they hand you the film and they say, Kristen and Bobby, go do a score, or as they're doing the film, they're giving you pieces, or is it just script? How does it, how does it work? Well, um, it's, it's a process that's very much like making a musical on stage, actually, with, um, with animated musicals, not necessarily with a, a live-action musical where you write a script and you write songs and then you kind of just shoot it. Um, with this, with, with animation, there's iterative drafts of the story. So they start with one story. We might, we might, there might be a script when we are hired, and we get to read it and say, like, oh, I think maybe song go there, there, there. And um, um, with Winnie the Pooh, there was no script. They never wrote a script. Um, they did most of it in the in the storyboarding, right? Yeah. And I remember they they gave, they told us, please write a song about. Um, I don't know if any of you know. Um, the like Batson. twelve people watched I, Winnie the Pooh in two thousand eleven. Thank you, you thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice, nice. Um, it opened the same day as um, Harry the last 7. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It was not our. It was not. It's not a well-known film. Um, but but it's just, very sweet. It's, it is sweet. it's a good. The process is similar for most of them. You you kind of. You write a version of it. You, maybe we get to write two songs per version, and the songs will either stick or not. And very often, the whole story gets scrapped um, from version to version. So, for instance, it's like Frozen. Mm -hmm. um, Frozen. We came to there was a script for Frozen, fall of two thousand eleven, where Elsa was a blue. She had she was blue with this sharp spiky hair, and she, she was kidnapped Anna. She was a villain, and she kidnapped her sister, uh, who was this sort of perfect prissy princess, from her own wedding and froze her heart. And then the rest of the, the movie was uh, her chasing Anna and Kristoff across the tundra with her like army of evil snowmen. Led by um, Olaf. Led by Olaf, who was a foodie. And, <laughs> um, and we tried to write a song. We wrote a couple songs for that version. And there was a come to Jesus moment. And what happens is, after you, after you, there's always a, a screening. You sort of put up a version, and it it's, gets storyboarded like, like an animatic, um, sort of with pictures and pictures script that happening. don't move very much. It's like a comic book up on on the screen. Um, and after that, you, the brain trust at Disney, which is sort of all the directors and all the writers in the major film come into a room and John Lasseter and and some of the the creative brass there are there too and you kind of take a baseball bat to it um, and and also you know if there are parts that are strong people say this works for me here's what doesn't work so that you then take the few pieces that work from the first uh, script and you rebuild on it so you rebuild stronger each time um, but in that moment, we had sort of a come to Jesus moment of like, okay, you can do this script. You, it can happen. So, so you're sitting in the room with them as they're taking a bat to it. Yes. Oh yeah. And it's give and it's give and take. It's not a committee saying, no. no it's like a room like this. Okay. Except we're all around a table about this many people, and and everyone gets a chance to say what they want. And someone's taking notes. Someone's typing notes on the computer. And um, <clears throat> and it's very brutal and very direct. And your job as a create, creative artist, and this is something wonderful that BMI does teach, your, your whole process is doing an assignment, standing up in front of a room, presenting it, and you learn how to take criticism from the whole class, how to, and also how to sort through that criticism mm -hmm. when, once you leave the room and rebuild something stronger. And so you, we've both been through this process um, that is a really important part of being a songwriter in this world is listening, taking the criticism, not allowing it to kill your soul, and um, so the Lopez's don't have thin skin. Mm. No, you, you, yeah, you're, you're you not can. you're not related to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a good idea to tweet about <laughs> uh, post any criticism. <laughs> um, but uh, you anyway, you sit, you sit. In this room, and you um, 
you hear everything. And at the end of hearing it, we kind of had this moment where we said, this could be a movie, um, but I don't think it can be a movie and a musical. You, it has none of the pieces of what a musical needs to, to sing. Um, so every if, the characters if, are vindictive. They're kind of jealous. They're petty, and you just wouldn't. Fraulein Maria wouldn't. Wouldn't be like, I hate my sister. I'm gonna kidnap her. So 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 basically, it sounds like they're giving you almost chunks. They're not giving you the whole thing. They're not giving you the whole thing at. They're not giving you the whole thing at once, even storyboarding. Well, in and this stuff. case, what what it is is we we had to topple the whole thing mm -hmm. and rebuild. Who are our main characters? Mm -hmm. Who who will Anna be? We started with Anna. Um, like, oh. what do you need at the center of this musical? Like, what for us? We thought we knew Anna had to change from being this perfect princess. That that actually she needed to be the imperfect one. Um, that she, she needed, needed to, have to have a huge heart. Yeah. And, uh, um, optimism, and, optimism. And, and just a well of good feeling that would you believe that she'd break into song. I think what oh. people don't know is that is how much we play a part in the story. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not handed mm -hmm. a scene and told write a song, write a song that'll make that'll work with this scene. We we help tell them what scene to write, and then they give us the scene. We tell them Sometimes. to rewrite it. And... So in the in the best <laughs> in the best world, we all say what does the story need to be. <laughs> We're back and forth. We're going back and forth with our writer, collaborator. Um, they're saying, well, I, what the character, what I think would be great is if the character is doing this. And we're saying, what we think would be great is if the character had this kind of rhythm and this kind of energy. And we made a discovery at the end of the song. And we kind of all create what it needs to be together. And then we go off and write it. Um, that's, that's how Frozen happened. And do you find it frustrating at all that you might have half of the group that doesn't have a musical background. That's basically providing constructive criticism. That I mean, the half of the audience doesn't have a musical background. Okay. They're just giving their feedback as people, and and they're giving their insight as creators. Um, and that that's all that's all very useful. But um, what we need is for the the small team, the director, the writer, and um, you know the the storyboard artists to um, to understand the needs of the musical. Um, if they don't, if they don't listen to us, then there's no way it can be a musical because um, we all need to be making the same thing. It's hard enough to make a musical when everybody wants to make a musical. <laughs> that it, uh, that if, if someone actually doesn't know or doesn't want to, then it's impossible. That's the hardest part. Is sometimes you do actually get, if you have a collaborator who not only um, doesn't know how to make a musical but doesn't want to, um, that's that's when you get into problems of. Of we we will never see eye to eye mm -hmm. because w in our DNA as storytellers it it's always um, about where does where's the song going to spring up from and if you have someone who's like I hate songs um, <laughs> then, we're, then then we get into trouble um, 